Hi, my name's Scott Hebbard from Spark Systems. The following webinar will introduce Spark Systems Cloud Services. The webinar begins with a simple demonstration of how easy it is to connect to a Spark Systems Cloud Service. We then switch roles to an admin to demonstrate how to create a cloud service based on a Firebird database repository. Finally, we examine cloud service technology including OSLC and the reusable asset service. The Spark Systems Cloud Service offers a number of distinct advantages over a traditional database connection. Enjoy simple and convenient access to enterprise architect models with improved performance. Cloud connections provide a cost-effective and flexible approach to model sharing. Share private data over HTTPS and establish role-based security. Leverage powerful collaboration tools such as model mail, team review, and auditing. Prevent exposing database servers through firewalls. The simple process of setting up drivers and connections can now be performed once by an administrator during the server configuration rather than every time you open a model. Establish a shared vision for your team at any location. The Spark Systems website allows you to connect to a cloud-based model. Select a cloud service from one of three convenient locations including London, Chicago and Sydney. Simply enter the credentials provided which include an address, port number and model name. Click OK to open your cloud model. Spark Systems has created a read-only copy of the EA example model. This allows you to test the cloud technology for yourself. It is very easy to configure a cloud model to manage multiple users editing model elements from all around the world. Cloud models can leverage inbuilt enterprise architect tools including the traceability window, model mail, team review, the reusable asset service, OSLC, and much, much more. Now let's switch gears. Assuming the role of a system administrator, I shall demonstrate how easy it is to establish a cloud service. The Enterprise Architect installation directory contains two folders called Cloud Services and Client. The Cloud Services directory contains a configuration file called ssCloudServices.config. Open the XML-based configuration file as an administrator to ensure that you have sufficient rights to edit and save the file. The first line describes the port that will be used for all admin tasks. By default, the management client will use port 803. Password protection can be provided if you want to limit access to the server. The cloud server can define an arbitrary number of ports on which to listen for connections from Enterprise Architect. The example on screen indicates that the server will listen for HTTP connections on port 804. Now we can open the client directory and run the cloud services client. The Spark Systems Cloud Services cl Configuration Client is used to create and manage cloud-based models. You will note that we are connecting via port 803 as outlined in the configuration file. When you open the Cloud Services Client, you will be prompted to log in. By default, no password is required. However, this can easily be modified via server options. Now let's add a new database. The Add Database Manager dialog displays. By entering the extension .fdb, we can create a Firebird database. Alternatively, you could connect to an existing database or set up the data link properties for a different DBMS repository. I chose Firebird because it's very easy. I can now configure the database to accept queries and limit the number of simultaneous queries accordingly. You can also select to create a read-only model like our previous example. The server options allow you to establish a password and set the log level. Now that we have created our cloud-based model, I can open Enterprise Architect and connect.
Simply enter the model name, address and port number to connect. Please note that the first name field is simply used to store a meaningful name in your local instance of Enterprise Architect. From the drop down menu I'm going to select 804 to connect and enter the appropriate details. On screen we have an empty cloud-based model. We can populate our model by adding packages and model elements. However, to save time I'm going to import an existing XMI file. The cloud model now contains a mind map describing the webinar and a series of requirements for an electronic banking system, including a number of use cases that describe system interaction. Traditionally, sharing this information with other tools would be challenging. However, this is made much simpler with Open Services for Lifecycle Collaboration, or OSLC for short. OSLC provides a set of specifications that make life easier for tool users and tool vendors to work together and share information. Examples of the OSLC query capability can be found in the Enterprise Architect User Guide. I plan on entering the queries directly into a web browser to showcase how they work. In reality, a third-party tool or OSLC client would run the query and then consume the output RDF XML format. It is unlikely that this task would typically be performed by an end user as demonstrated today. The first query shall retrieve all requirements listed in my Firebird model. I'm connected to localhost on port 804 supplying the model name and a query string at the end of the URL. Scrolling down, I can review all of the requirements listed within my model. Requirement number 26 is entitled Validate User. The identifier displays a GUID. Other details listed include the author's name, created and modified dates. Other properties include status, difficulty, priority, phase and version number. I can use the URL provided to find out more about a particular requirement. Simply copy and paste that URL in a new tab. This allows us to examine the validate user requirement in more detail. I can refer to the user guide to identify the syntax required for more complex queries. For example, I can find any requirements fitting a particular prefix. I'm going to use this type of query to find any requirement with the prefix requirement 16 add users. Refer to the user guide for more information on the query structure. If I make changes to the live model via the cloud, these changes are automatically reflected in my OSLC call. So let's switch to Enterprise Architect and make changes to the properties for add users. I'm going to change the author name from Pauline to Scott Hebbard. When I switch back to the web browser and refresh the page, you can observe the changes. Enterprise Architect acts as an OSLC provider and supports the Requirements Management 2.0 specifications of OSLC, which allows for creating, retrieving, and querying the requirements in a model accessed via a cloud connection. The reusable asset service portion of the cloud server allows packages to be defined that can be reused in any model. Enterprise Architect and the cloud server will track cross-package dependencies and ensure that everything required by the package is available when the package is requested. To use the reusable asset service, we need to identify the registry, create the storages, enable password protection, and register the asset packages. The first step is to create a cloud model to store our registry. Once again, I'll use a simple Firebird database. I then need to configure the model to accept queries. I'm now ready to create my first reusable asset service. 
For the next part of the webinar, I want to share a package of requirements that manages bank cards because it is needed by many divisions within the bank. To open the RAS, select Tools followed by the Reusable Asset Service. I need to connect to the cloud-based registry that I just configured. Remember to enter the model name, address and port number. Enterprise Architect warns me that my registry does not contain any storages. So let's establish an administration password and create our first storage. Press the Set Administrator Password and enter a suitable password. Press the New Storage button on the toolbar. Enter a storage name, select Complete as the type and enter a password if desired. You also have the ability to share read-only packages so end users are unable to edit the registered package. This is ideal for sharing standards or artifacts that must never change. Enterprise Architect warns you that you can only access this storage with a password. Now that we've created our storage, we're free to register our packages. Press the register button and you'll be prompted for a password. It is always best practice to check for any package dependencies before you register an asset. Enter comments and notes to help describe the asset to your fellow team members. Finally, register the package. You can now see that version 1 of the Manage Cards package is now available via the reusable asset service. If I now switch to a blank Enterprise Architect model, I can deploy this asset which supports technology and software reuse throughout an organisation. I start by opening the RAS and I connect to the appropriate cloud-based server. Select the desired asset and press import. I can import a single package or a package and any of its dependents. EA prompts that it will overwrite the package if it exists in the model. We've now successfully deployed an asset using cloud-based technology. The reusable asset service will automatically identify any dependencies that exist between packages. For example, the package Manage Users has dependencies to a number of use cases. When I register the Manage Users package and check for dependencies, it identifies a package entitled ATM Example. Click OK to add that package to the registry. You will note that the status of the package ATM example is still pending, so I therefore need to check if it has any dependencies. It depends on the package entitled Actors. I am unable to register a package until each status is set to Ready. Enterprise Architect offers the advantage of automatically finding all package dependencies and including them in your registry to ensure that you have a complete solution. The tabs at the bottom of the page list asset properties, like the unique GUID, and can be used to examine package contents and dependencies. It will also identify dependencies on technologies like TOGAF and Archimate. The reusable asset service provides a simple and convenient mechanism for modelers to distribute or download reusable model I have provided. We began by connecting to a test. cloud environment to look at a read-only model. All you needed to connect was a model name, address and port number. We then examined the tools For more information on cloud services, please visit www.sparksystems.com dot com